Since you guys liked part one and two so much, I've decided to do a part three of this series. And trust me when I say there is still plenty of tea to spill. By the way, if you haven't seen parts one and two of this series, you should definitely check them out after this video. Hey, what's up guys? Hope you're all doing good. I'm Mackenzie and I'm your host for today's video. And today I'm gonna be listing for the third time the top 10 makeup brands that are extremely problematic. And if for some reason you're not already subscribed, you really should because we make ultra juicy videos like this every single day. I'm also trying out a new setup, so let me know what you think about it in the comments down below. I hope it's a little more interesting than the old one and I'll definitely keep using this if you guys like it more. Okay, without further ado, let's get into the scandals. So starting off with number 10, we have Benefit Cosmetics. So this Benefit scandal is very strange and to be honest, I was completely shocked. I had not heard about it before. Okay, so Benefit got in a crazy scandal where they tweeted out from their official account tweets that people felt were body shaming. So what happened here is that they were hopping on a hashtag trend where you basically change the titles of movies to make them fatter, which is really strange and confusing. And honestly, I don't even know how to describe it properly. It's so strange. Uh, but for some reason, the person in charge of benefits Twitter decided to get in on the trend and change the names of some movies. One example is when they changed Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets to Heavy Potter and the Chamber of Sandwiches. And after this, of course, a lot of people were confused and outraged that they could be body shaming. So they tweeted out their first apology, not really apologizing, where they said, quote, lovely Benny babies. We always get involved in hashtags that are trending. We are not poking fun at anybody. Hashtag laughter is the best cosmetic. And when people didn't feel that this was a real apology, Benefit followed up with their second apology saying, quote, we made a big mistake. We joined a hashtag in bad taste. We truly believe beauty comes in all shapes and sizes. Please accept our apology. And yeah, something tells me whoever runs their social media got in some trouble for this one. Next up at number nine, Ulta. So Ulta actually got into a huge scandal back in 2018 when the company faced multiple lawsuits for allegedly reselling used products that had been returned. The company faced two class action lawsuits that claimed employees repackaged products that were damaged or returned and then put them back on the shelf. This all started because some employees decided to come out on Twitter and share their stories of being pushed by management to resell items. Check Dropbox for um, some tweets here. One tweet said, quote, we were told by managers to repackage slash resell the items and put it back on the shelf. They would resell sell everything, makeup, hair care, skincare, fragrances, hair tools, etc. A former employee also claimed that Ulta would clean a used foundation stick with a Q-tip then resell it. Then another employee claimed that at her location, shampoos, lotions, and other items in bottles were put back on shelves. The employee stated that their reason they did this was because higher level managers pressured the stores to keep their dollar amounts of damaged, of damaged or returned items down. And please tell me below if you're gonna be looking at Ulta the same way after this because I truly cannot. In at number eight, KL Polish. So YouTuber Kathleen Lights started her own nail polish line called KL Polish in 2016. But a few years later in 2019, she announced that she was leaving the company. But from the tone of the video and the thorough legal disclaimer she put in the beginning, many speculated that she was leaving against her own will and that the investors were essentially kicking her out of her own company. Then the Instagram account for KL Polish posted and then deleted a shady Instagram post confirming their split, which some felt confirmed these speculations. But thankfully for Kathleen's fans, she ended up launching her own line of polishes called Lights Lacure Lace Later that year. And after that, I'm assuming because of lack of sales, KL Polish closed down. And since the higher ups of the company seemed pretty shady based on what people speculated, it's probably for the best. Next up at number seven is Zoella Beauty. Zoella Beauty is the beauty brand that was created by Zoe Sub. In 2017, she launched a holiday advent calendar that was sold in boots for 50 pounds. And almost as soon as it was launched, it was getting backlash. Fans were really disappointed that she would promote a somewhat subpar product that cost customers a lot of money. Like 50 bucks ain't cheap. <laughs> For some more info on the item, it only contained 12 doors with pretty underwhelming gifts in each, like a pen, room spray, a cookie cutter, and a notebook in some of the doors. Then she decided to address it in one of her vlogs instead of making a separate video about it and address the backlash about 33 minutes into the video, which is pretty annoying to those fans that wanted an upfront explanation about the whole thing. Her explanation is that she had no control over the price of the product, but fans thought that this was just deflection on her part and that she was not taking account of 
accountability for the situation. After all, the Backlash boots did end up lowering the price of the product to 25 pounds. Next up at number six, Kylie Skin. So this is one I'm sure you've heard about, but a lot of people found Kylie Skin potentially harmful to consumers after she announced that she was including a walnut scrub as part of her skincare line. And then a ton of skincare experts came out saying that walnuts should not be used on the skin. And others were also confused that she was promoting a manual exfoliant when chemical exfoliants are much better for the skin and are now kind of the standard for exfoliation these days. And in the launch, Kylie recommended that customers use the walnut scrub two to three times per week to achieve baby soft skin. However, doing so can create micro tears in the skin, damaging the delicate barrier and triggering inflammation, which can exacerbate skin conditions like acne, eczema, rosacea, and so on. This then led people to conclude that Kylie had not done enough research before launching the line and calling her out on what they consider to be an obvious money grab. Since the launch of the product to the public, the reviews on Ulta seem to be pretty mixed, with a lot of people saying that it left their skin feeling great, but with others saying it made them break out like crazy. Have it through at number five, Urban Decay. So Urban Decay got in a lot of hot water after they released swatches of their razor sharp liquid eyeliner across a model's wrist. And as you might imagine, the name of the product combined with the imagery triggered those who had dealt with self-harm. And to be honest, when you look at the ad, like it's pretty clear the swatches are concentrated very like far down the model's wrist when people don't generally swatch around that area. So it did look a little off to me when I saw it for the first time, I gotta be honest. And of course, after this, there was a lot of outrage on Twitter and the company apologized and then took down the ad. But as you can imagine, a lot of people thought that the damage had already been done. Next up at number four, KKW Beauty. So Kim Kardashian's beauty line, KKW Beauty, of course has gotten in a scandal or two since its launch. One of the biggest things the brand got backlash for was when many accused Kim of darkening her skin tone in the initial ads for the beauty launch. Kim even addressed this controversy on her show where she stated that she was trying to go for a moody aesthetic with the photos to really highlight the sharp contour in the photo, but they ended up coming out a lot darker than her actual skin tone. After that backlash, Kim and her team released an apology and blamed the lighting as the reason she was so dark in the pictures. Then they redid the shoot with brighter lighting accurately reflecting her skin tone. But that that's not all. <laughs> KKW also got into some more trouble for the shade range of their concealer line, which if you've watched this series, you know happens a lot, like way too often. Kim responded saying that she is looking into expanding the line, but she does not see it as a major issue as concealer shades generally do not have to match perfectly with skin tone. What are your thoughts on that? Do you agree with Kim on the concealer thing? Next up at number three, Dragon Beauty. So this one's not as much problematic as it was just kind of a flop. <laughs> so Nikita Dragon's beauty line got a lot of heat when it was released, with a lot of people using the opportunity to drag Nikita and remind people of her past scandals to convince them to not buy her product. One of the main things that Nikita has been called out for in the past is her problems with cultural appropriation, as she has faced backlash for cultural appropriation numerous times, with her being called out for wearing dreadlocks and braids in the past. And when she addressed it, she basically just said she was embracing African culture and did not really apologize to those that were offended. Also, when Patrick Starr reviewed the products on his YouTube YouTube channel, many said he didn't seem very impressed by them, and he even made a kind of sly comment about the launch being sold out so quickly, leaving many to question if the brand was actually sold out because people liked it, or if Nikita purposely ordered a really low stock to make it seem like it was in high demand when it really wasn't. This was kind of confirmed on the day of her pop-up launch, when many people trolled her for the amount of people that showed up, or I guess I should say lack thereof. Next up at number two, KKW Fragrance. Okay, so forgive me for putting KKW KKW on this list twice, but this point is about the fragrance side of the company and it was just so juicy I had to include, so please forgive me. So the fragrance side of the business has been involved in a lot of scandals and it really seems like it cannot catch a break. So one of her fragrance launches caused a lot of outrage when it was discovered that it could not ship to Australia or New Zealand because of the high alcohol content of their perfume makes it potentially dangerous to ship. People were angry that Kim and her team did not know of this beforehand, and even though they refunded customers, some were still very disappointed that they could not get the products. Then another one of the launches resulted in a lawsuit after a company called Vibes Media felt the logo of her Vibes perfume was a ripoff of their logo. The two parties did reach a private settlement about the matter though. Then lastly, she was accused of stealing the idea for the perfume bottle that was made from her body from Gautier's 1993 fragrance. After people called this out, Gautier posted a shady photo of their bottle on their Instagram page, throwing some more shade at Kim. And taking our number one spot, we have Revlon. Okay, so this last one is pretty insane. 
please let me know below if you've heard of this one before as I had not heard of it at all before making this video. Okay, so Revlon's old CEO, Lorenzo Delfini, was accused of allegedly being racist and xenophobic. Some allegations against him stated that he could, quote, smell African-American people when they walked into a room and that Jewish people stuck together and that he hates dirty Americans. This all came out when Alan Myers, who was Revlon's chief scientific officer before he was fired, claimed that Lorenzo was hostile to him and that he frequently yelled at him in front of other colleagues. And then he made anti-Semitic and anti-American remarks in front of him. Myers claimed that Lorenzo treated him differently because he was Jewish and American. Well, the majority of the people on his team were Spanish and Italian. And of course, after all this, the CEO was removed from his position. So I think Revlon as a company is fine now, but unfortunately they just hired the wrong person to run it back in the day. Okay, so that's all for this list. Let me know in the comments if you had heard of some of these scandals before, or if this was news to you like it was to me for a lot of these. Before I go though, I'm gonna shout out some of the comments from part two of this series. Kayla Graham said, China's makeup laws are strict, but if the makeup is made in China, they don't have to test on animals. That's how Wet n Wild can be vegan and sold in China. Wow, that's really, really interesting. Thanks so much for sharing that. But that's kind of strange to me because I assumed a lot of these companies already manufactured their stuff in China because, you know what I mean, it seems like everything is made in China these days. So that's that's really interesting. Thanks so much for sharing that. Then True Blue said, Amber Heard, hippity hoppity, my career about to stop it. You guys are just too funny, I cannot. Honestly, hope her career about to stop it pretty soon. Then Holly said that Z palette brand has me rolling. Like don't make a business and then get offended and butt hurt when people talk negatively about the products. Not personal, it's just business. And honestly, that's just facts, sis. Like it's crazy when brands get defensive about products. Like it's not a personal attack. It's literally just customer feedback <laughs> happens to everyone. Okay, so that's all from me guys. Thank you so much for watching till the end if you made it all the way here. And make sure to like and subscribe down below if you're not already and follow the team on our social medias to be kept up to date with our lives. My Instagram's down below if you wanna check it out. Please stay safe everyone and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.